Good evening and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick, I'm the mayor of this great town, and we're here today to once again proclaim September of 2016 as National Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. I'd like to read this, okay, somebody can clap, that's good. Uh, <clears throat> First, let me introduce uh, several of our town council members. Greg Ficarra, councilman at large. Kyle Anderson, councilman at large. Debbie Meehan, fifth ward councilwoman. Vera Patel, fourth ward councilman and newly appointed. This is his uh, first full meeting. And Lizbeth DeJesus, councilwoman at large. So we have a great group up here. And now I'd like to read this proclamation. Whereas the United States Congress designates the month of September as National Hydrocephalus Awareness Month, thereby elevating hydrocephalus as a medical condition that requires national resources devoted to research and awareness. And whereas the number of people who develop hydrocephalus or who are currently living with hydrocephalus is difficult to establish since there is no national registry of people with the condition, nevertheless, experts estimate that hydrocephalus affects over 1 million Americans and occurs in 1.5 of every thousand births at an estimated 700,000 older Americans, which I don't think I've seen that stat before. That's pretty amazing. Alarming, I should say. And whereas Michael and Kim Ilions, executive officers, National Pediatric Hydrocephalus Foundation, and founding officers of the Woodbridge Township Pediatric Hydrocephalus Foundation, have led the national effort to increase public awareness and information regarding hydrocephalus. And whereas the National Pediatric Hydrocephalus Association invites representatives from the national, state, and local levels to recognize the estimated one million Americans touched by hydrocephalus and encourages leaders from professional, community, and medical-based organizations and associations to work with the medical community in the search for a cure and to explore additional treatment options for those afflicted with hydrocephalus, to educate the community by raising the level of awareness about this brain condition, and to provide support to the family friends and children who are diagnosed with hydrocephalus. Now therefore I, John E. McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge and in concert with the Woodbridge Township Council, do hereby recognize the period beginning the first day of September through the 30th day of September in the year 2016 to be National Hydrocephalus Awareness Month in Woodbridge Township and do further extend recognition to the parents and families of the Woodbridge Pediatric Hydrocephalus Foundation for their leadership, dedication, and unfailing spirit and courage in leading the efforts to find a cure for hydrocephalus. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike and Kim literally are, as many of you know, you're here because you're somehow affected by this. They really are national leaders. I mean, they testify before Congress. They know senators. They know congressmen. They do an amazing job uh, on behalf of their family, because, of course, their son Cole uh, is afflicted with the disease. Uh, cool kid, and he's wearing a Yankee hat today, <laughs> which I got him. I got him. He's got it on backwards. We'll be working on that when he gets up here. Um, but these are just two people who I just have an amazing amount of respect for. Uh, the way they have taken what, you know, hit them 10 or so years ago and just taken that to such an amazing level to literally themselves bring awareness with others. I don't mean to themselves, but certainly with a lot of their effort to raise awareness of this disease, literally nationwide, they've done an amazing job. So I'd like to call up Michael and Kim to accept this proclamation and say a few words. Well, again, we are honored. I want to thank everybody who's been here. We have some of our board of director families here, the, the Jansons in the back on behalf of their daughter, Allie, another hydro hero, and other families that are here with hydrocephalus, and my friends from the MAC, and family friends that are here, relatives. So I want to thank everybody for supporting. The council has been behind us for years now, and the mayor, of course, that started a national movement with using a town or a city to designate the month of hydrocephalus awareness but to follow the national lead. So Mayor McCormick has done an outstanding job in his own right in raising awareness in one of the biggest towns in the state and the best town in the state. No offense to, to all of you that are coming here from all the states. Um, you know, but this is no small thing to do. I mean, it takes scheduling and things to do and putting a flag up, and it, it's really a great honor to be, able to, to be able to do this for us and everybody dealing with hydrocephalus, either a child or an adult. 
And uh, every year we uh, try to raise awareness at the national level, like we mentioned, by going to Washington, D.C. And each year we randomly choose, because it's the only fair way to do it, uh, one boy and one girl to represent the Hydra's Levels community as national ambassadors. And last year we were lucky that the ambassador for the girls happened to be from Woodbridge, New Jersey, Haley Musinen. So she was able to come here tonight. And other at times it's someone from outside the state and other parts of the country. And this year, the female was from Sir, near Syracuse, New York, and they are here today. Our own ambassador for hydrocephalus awareness, Elise Clow, six years old. Come on. She, bring Minnie with you here. Bring Minnie with you. You probably feel better holding okay. the mini there. So, beautiful girl, girl here joining us and raising awareness of Father Tom, who runs the REACH organization in Syracuse, a like minded organization that puts uh, research first over anything else, which is the most important thing is finding a cure. Elise had her seventh brain surgery just in uh, early August, right before we were headed to Washington. It was close that they were going to make it, and they made it to Washington to raise awareness. So, it was great that she was able to go. Uh, their congressman, uh, Richard Hanna, from upstate New York, as soon as they left the office, called up our contacts in Rep. Smith's office, Congressman Chris Smith, and joined as a co-sponsor on a bill that would create a national registry. So congratulations to the Cloud family and other members of REACH that were able to advocate on behalf of their families and that bill. Yes? I just want to take a break. Okay, you want to sit down? Okay. Okay. It's tough being a star, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, we're going to do autographs later. So I just want to, again, thank everybody for coming. Washington went very well. We had 130 advocates there, meeting with members of uh, House of Representatives and the Senate offices, trying to get uh, caucus members for the Hydrocephalus Caucus and sponsors for the H.R. 2313, which would create, like I mentioned, a national registry of hydrocephalus. That's the only way we're going to know the true numbers. It's estimated over a million people have it. It's estimated it's one in fi uh, 500 births. Um, it's estimated how many people have it with TBIs and other causes acquired and congenital. We really need those hard numbers before we go back and say we need X amount of dollars to fund proper research, which is not being done right now. So again, thank you, the mayor, thank you, the town and the council members, thank you very much. And they also are congressmen too, right? Oh yeah, Frank Pallone, great job by uh, Congressman Frank Pallone, who is a member of the Leonard caucus. Lance, and Leonard Lance is a co-chair of the caucus. And the Leonard Lance is on the HR 2313. Chris Smith's on the bill. Um, bill Pasquale has, is on the bill, and both the caucus and the bill is doing a great job. He runs the Traumatic Brain uh, Task Force, Brain Injury Task Force in Congress. So there's a connection there, obviously, between hydrocephalus and traumatic brain injuries. So it's great to have the involvement. Jersey is leading the way, both here in Woodbridge and at the uh, state and federal level. So and again, thank you. Why would something not be on the bill? It's just a matter of getting to them. Oh, you don't really want me to say that on TV, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> really? I'm already in trouble. No, but I mean, like, it's such a common sense thing. We have heard for the caucus itself, we've heard from members of Congress that if they join one, they got to they got to join them all. Well, you know what? If someone asks, you should join. You're representing the constituents. Constituents. If they ask you something, you should say yes, I'll do it. But we get what, well, silent support or come back if you need something, and they don't join for the, join for the bill. It really matters what staffer you meet with. If they care, they're going to get their boss to sign on to it. If they don't care, it doesn't leave their desk, and then the boss doesn't even know that we were even there and what we were even talking about. So but it really there are a million people and divided by you know 435 Congress, and there's thousands in each district. And, and like everything else, it takes the community to rise up and wow. get involved. And that be too hard. it's really difficult to get, you know, these are the dedicated members here, but like I said, there's a million people dealing with this, and we had 130 that came to Washington. So the numbers have to change where more people care and not worry about getting Christmas gifts and going away to sleepaway camp for a weekend, but advocating for research, which is the most important thing. My son, 13 sur sur surgeries, at least seven surgeries, Ali, one surgery. And what, how many has Evan had? Four? So, I mean, that's over 20 surgeries already for kids that none of them are over 11 years old. Cole's the oldest. Uh, actually, Ali's four, 16. So that's got to change. So unless people care, nobody else is going to care. The community has to care first. Wow. Good job, man. Good job, man. I want to recognize uh, Second Ward Councilman Rick Delina joined us. Third Ward Councilman Corey Spiller joined us. And 
Now, Mike mentioned the MAC. The MAC isn't me. The MAC is the Mayor's Advisory Committee. There's a whole group back there that are on that group. They do an awesome job. Terry Sharkey, the chairman, is here. Just uh, two days ago, they're out being race marshals all over town for the uh, Mayor's Council on Physical Fitness uh, 5K. They do a phenomenal job, and Mike's one of them. And Mike's been on it for many, many years, and he's here at all kinds of events, helping out street fairs, parades, races, uh, the bike tour, anything, you name it. Mike's out there with this very dedicated group. So thank you to Mike for that personally, and thanks to the entire Mayor's Advisory Committee. We're also joined by Assemblyman Coughlin, uh, who uh, represents Woodbridge in the 19th District. We're also joined by Dan Harris, a member of our local Board of Education. And uh, Kim, did Mike cover everything? He did. He did. Oh, boy. He sure did. <laughs> I gave him an opening, and boy, he, he ran through it. So, all right, let's go outside and raise a flag. All you guys that want to help me? Okay, I'm going to ask if Elise will come up and help me raise the flag along with Cole. Anybody else would like to come up? Allie. Come on, Allie, young lady. Jeffrey. Allie. Evan. Evan? You want to bring Evan up? Come on over. Everybody hold this. Everybody hold a piece of it. Well, that's okay. Just one okay. piece. Come on over, Al. Well, that's okay if I just... Yeah, you can watch. Just you, can just, you can just watch if you want. Anybody else want to join in? I just want to watch. Just want to watch. Okay, ready? Start pulling. One. Good. Keep going. You guys are doing good. You don't even need help. Look at you. Tell them when to stop. A little more. Uh, stop. A little higher? No? Is that good? A little more, a little more, a little more. Yeah, okay. All right. Very good, guys. Okay. Thank you all very much. Cole, thanks, buddy. You're the man. Now, turn your hat around. Turn your hat around. Let everybody see your Yankee fan. Oh, boy. boy. That's my man. <laughs> He's really a Mets fan. <laughs> no, don't say that on TV. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I pledge allegiance in a moment of silence remembering all the men and women in the service. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger published a notice on December 18, 2015. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilwoman De Jesus. Here. Councilman Facaro. Here. Councilman Patel. Here. Councilwoman Meehan. Here. Councilman Small. Here. Councilman Spiller. Here. Vice President Delina. Here. And President Drum. Mr. President, if I get a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes and the work session from August 23rd, as well as the August 30th public hearing on the fiscal year 2017 budget. Make a motion. Second. Any well, comments? Sorry. Good. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with the second reading ordinances, we will take letter A. This evening, which is an amendment to Chapter 7 entitled Traffic of the Revised Ordinance of the Town of Woodbridge. And this is to add Star Street on the south side for a designated handicapped parking spot. We'll also take B as well with that, which is also a traffic amendment, and that is for Walter Drive again for handicapped parking. And I get a motion to take A and B as consent and open it up to the public for comment. Motion. Second. Any comments from Council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letters A and B, letters A and B only. Seeing no comment from the public, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for as required by law? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter C is an ordinance adopting amendments to Chapter 150, which is our land use ordinance of the Town for Woodbridge with regards to building and housing and the zoning map. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open? Make a motion. Second. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter C, letter C only. Seeing no comment from the public, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Ayes have it. Letter D is an ordinance approving the application for a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with Blair SG1 Urban Renewal Entity, LLC. And I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open. Make a motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter D, letter D only. Uh, is this an existing building and um, part can you go to the microphone? Oh, please. Wait. Okay. Your name and where you live. Uh, good, good evening, Council Vice President uh, George Walker, Hope One. Um, what is this? Uh, is this an existing building and is there a proposed tenant to go into this building? And what's the? This is a pilot, right? It's the old site of the former White Rose on Blair Road. It's oh, out there? Program. Yes. Is it going to be subdivided or is there going to be uh, one tenant in there? Just one tenant. One tenant. Who's the tenant going to be? Cytex, is that correct? Sure, the tenant is more. Did you know that the tenant's going to be? Uh, no, but they do have one, and you're correct. Cytex is the owner. Okay, the local hires are going to use uh, local control. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll check that out. And um, how long is the tax a thing for? Goes 11. First, the first section is uh, one to ten years. And then 11 to 20 years, and then third, up to 30 years. Up to 30 years. Yes. Okay, it's not 40 years, right? No. 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 Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments from the public on letter D? Letter D only. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted, and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Under ordinances first reading, we will take E, F, G, and H by consent. Can I get a motion that these four ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home News Tribune this Friday, September 9, 2016, with notice of public hearing to be held on September 20th, 2016 at 7 p.m.? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolutions, you have number 1 through 18 listed. If I get a motion to approve 1 through 18 by consent. Motion. Questions or comments from council? Mr. Mitch, uh, Council Vice President, just one comment on resolution number one. I'd just like to make mention uh, the all the hard work that Councilman Ficarra does on the Housing Authority, the information he brings back to us, but also, if I could flip hats, um, the assistance he's given the local fire officials with our residential property. So I think it would be a great, great appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from council? I'd like to. Second that I've been on the count, uh, on the housing authority with Councilman Ficarra, uh and uh, him being a, uh, an asset to the uh, to the council as a liaison between the two um, has been um, <coughs> fantastic, and uh, it's always bringing uh, valuable information uh, to the team. So thank you very much. Any other comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. We will now go to the public. Set hearing. Um, you, if you want, you can scope to the microphone, and then you have a five-minute time limit. State your name and where you live. You, know, you could just keep that mic in the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. Could you hear me? Yes. Okay, Robert Mezzi. Uh, uh, Everything I touch. Okay, take the time. Start the time now, right? Okay, President? Go right ahead. Okay, Robert Mezzi, 434 Alpine Street, Perth Amber. A weak Robert Mezzi. Deteriorating. I don't know. I'm, uh, they're doing a good job on me in Perth Amber. The Perth Amber Police Department, the judges, everybody. I'm going to talk about the crunch in Woodbridge where they evicted me. He told, I, was, I couldn't catch my breath, and they threw me out. He said, don't come back here anymore. The Crunch in Woodbridge on uh, Route 35, Frederick Drive, The Crunch. And we'll talk about uh, this uh, grocery sh uh, store up the road next to the v CVS. I, I can't think of the name. What do you call it? Farmer's Market. There's a guy. My brother was in Marines in 5051, a young kid. And he fought for the South Korea against the North Korea. This guy is from South Korea. And he tells me, he chose me, well, he told me don't, he's not, I can't buy lunch meat there. Pretty good. My brother served as a Marine when he was a young kid. We used to live in the Dunlap homes. He joined the Marines. They shipped him to Korea. Okay, I want to talk about 
the Port Danbury Police Department. Oh, they're doing a good job on me, very good job. Especially the cop, Maltalvo. I was paying my taxes. No, I was paying some kind of bill, and I'm handicapped. And I, there's no parking around the circle by City Hall, so I parked, having to park on the yellow sign. I mean, concrete, so I got to come out, I got a ticket. Then he, then he tell, tells me, you got business, you're done, leave. You know, he wants to get rid of me. I'm talking to the girl about the voting situation. He wants to get rid of me. Then I, I and then he says to me, I'm going to the police station. Then we're going to come lock you up. I got a witness, meaning the girl. The, the girl, they're, they're speaking in a foreign language. And he says something, A-S-S, you know, H-O-L-E, meaning me, at the end. And the girl sticks up for me. Oh, no, he didn't say nothing. All of a sudden, she can speak English. That's one incident. Another incident. Excuse, excuse me, sir. I, this really isn't the venue for. I, I talk in I talk in Port I, I, know. I go I go all the council I know, but meetings. This isn't the venue over here. We really can't help you except that you would have to take it up. Uh, either you go to a council meeting in Perth, Amboy. Yes. Or you could file a complaint at police headquarters. But otherwise, there's well, nothing we can really do for you in, in Perth, Amboy, as far as any kind of uh, well, law, law problem you might be having. What would you say you can file a complaint against you where? Can file police headquarters if you want to file a complaint. Well, I've been I've been doing that for the past. I, I know, but that's the only thing we could tell you. Otherwise, we, we can't do anything for you here. Well, let me let me. Uh, I got the. I could talk my uh, First Amendment. Let me have. Let me. Go I'm right ahead, like, but I'm just advising you. Well, I, I get maybe my guardian angels out there. All these criminals get get. They, they burn buildings, they burn, shoot everybody at cops, and yet the, everybody's sympathizing with them. Me, I go to work and uh, I cut my grass, I do this, and no, nobody's coming to my aid. Nobody. I'm getting, I'm getting uh, effed all over. And th th let me talk about this. All right, I, had, I was picketing 431 Alpine Street where this guy says I tried to kill him, and he found my car keys, never returned them. I, I, I called the, the police station and said, yeah, you could do it, don't worry about it, as long as you don't, you know, behave yourself. All of a sudden, I'm picketing, some guy comes off the stairs, about four guys or five guys, and said, get the F out of here. So I, he, he was blocking the sidewalk, I was going to go down, so I went to, into my house to call the cops. All the cops were beauties, especially this officer, Trigada. He says they had a camera on me, see me going up the stairs. I'm not going to go up the stairs where there's four or five guys there, which is a lie. And, and he says that uh, I'm harassing them. I'm harassing them. He's such a liar, a cop lying. He's sticking up for 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 them people because because that cop is a is an officer or something. Off, uh, Trigada, no Estrada. I'm sorry, Estrada. Yeah, very, very bad. They're, they're doing a good job on me. Well, you can see the way I'm talking. Another time, too, my guy on my left side, oh, he likes to party on Saturday night, playing karaoke, you know, singing. Loud, they don't care, 11.30. So somebody parked partially in my driveway. Then I called the cops. Okay, uh, your five minutes is up. Oh, let me finish the no, story. I'm sorry. It's One minute. Minute. No, your five minutes is up, sir. Sorry. Man, oh, man. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. George. W. George okay. uh, Boyd, sir, we ran sir. out of time. Thank you. Right, give me a break. Give me a senior break, will you? Thank you. Uh, that would be good, a senior break in town. Hi, uh, uh, Gerard Travalco, Hope Lawn. Uh, that would be uh, good on there. Yeah, um, a lot of businesses in town are kind of cuff and curt and very, uh, how shall we say, uh, demeaning to people, certain people. And uh, I kind of know what they say, you know, to people, they want to chase them out well, and stuff like, like that. Well, like I said, if you have any issues, call the police. Not that. Better business bureau. I mean, you're bringing these and people And they have in. every right that they don't want to serve anybody. That's their, their prerogative. The council president, I know they don't have the right to serve, they have the right to serve the people, but, Like you I know. said, if you have a business that you, you've been harassed at, or you go in there and you're harassed, you, you're more than welcome to call the police department. Better yet, better business bureau. I mean, you know. Or that, you can yeah. do that too. You sure. That I mean, also. you know, they're out of towners, they come here to do business, and, you know, I sit on Woodbridge over there. Okay. Um, okay, um, on the, uh, uh, let's see what we got here. I had something here. Oh, yeah, over by Delina Manor over there. They're building over there. Everything is uh, going pretty good and everything like that. 
that's not the only spot in the front they're going to have the uh, uh, parking, is it, over by where the memorial is? I'm not, I'm not really familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to have parking permits there, right, on the street, on Warden and Lee and stuff. And parking Keith. permits? Yeah, that's street. what I heard. Yeah. I'm For the people there? That. Anybody know? No. No? Parking permits on, on the street. They're not For the residences to residences put on their window? Parking permits for on the street. No, that doesn't come before the police no. department. Or, no. Doesn't no. matter. On that, all right. Yeah, we'll just keep a. No. See, just keep an ear to on the ground and stuff like that to see if anything like that is going to be coming up on your. That would be uh, kind of detrimental to the whole area. But um, yeah, they're working pretty good over there. Um, yeah, you might want to hit the. Uh, uh, trees and stuff like that that have the uh, bags of water on the bottom, you know, get them refilled like, you know, on New Brunswick Avenue and stuff like that. We've had extremely dry weather and uh, some of those trees are kind of uh, grown in on the bottom, you know, with all the weeds and stuff like that coming up. So maybe when it uh, slacks off a little bit, you get the uh, uh, DPW over there to uh, take a work at it. And uh, did you guys do anything over by Pathmark over there or did you tell them to at least sweep the lot or, you know, Cut some of the weeds down? There's new owners over there and they have plans on fixing it up. Okay, they're gonna do it, but in the interim, maybe they can, you know, pull some weeds and clean out the dumps because they're dumping in the back over there too, so. Well, they now put a fence up if you notice. Did they? Yes. I haven't been back there since last uh, well, Friday. Well, there's a fence uh, preventing anybody from going back there now. Yeah, okay, I didn't see the trucks there, but um, I guess, you know, you took them out on that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, how's, oh, how's Bob doing? Bob Major, he's doing good? I mean, Jim Major. Jim Major. I, Still. I guess so. Okay. What did we give him? Did we give him a watch? Did we give him a plaque? I mean, you know, he had, what, 13 years over here? Did we, you know, at least give him something for his recognition? We gave him best wishes. That's all? Come on, man. Let's let's start a PayPal page or a page over here. Get Jim Major a uh, little pocket watch over there. I mean, that's all you give him after 13 years? You give him the door? What else? Okay, what else? Uh, and lastly, uh, nothing on the cover-up, huh, for the police officers? Mr. DeBaca? Yeah. Move on. Oh, come on, here's a, here's a number. 732-745-3300. If you keep talking about it, I will have you have to sit down. I'm sitting down anyway, but, you know, you've been talking public safety here, you guys, and it's 15 months already. Nothing's Chewbacca, going on with it. What don't you understand? I don't understand. You're not doing we've anything. Already, we've no already on this. answered that, okay? What's that? It's already been answered already. Yeah, it's already been answered already. It's been delayed. Carol Mady, Menlo Park Terrace. Um, I see you have post 471 Nolte on your agenda, and I'd like to have you reconsider any thoughts you have about it until another vote is taken. The vote that they had there at the post was not complete because they had promised the veterans at the veteran homes, the veteran home at Menlo Park to be able to vote and they were unable to vote. So whatever you're considering with that, I would like it not to be considered until after a second vote is taken. Any other comments from the public? How you doing? My name is Anthony Alfieri, 171 Rosewood Lane. I came to the council about two and a half months ago in regards to the railroad tracks behind my home. We were, we have spoken to Mrs. Drum, she had Mr. Spiller come out, also Mr. Um, Brian Smalls was also lives in the neighborhood. At the time, <coughs> excuse me, I was contacted by a Phil Bujowski, he's the chief health officer. He explained to me that he was going to find out some new avenues to speak to somebody. We spoke with a Jocelyn Hill from Conrail. Since that time, we've been getting emails back and forth. We were told that the grass would be cut. It's way above the fencing. Animals are dying back there. Only a couple weeks ago, I had to pull one out because it was smelling so bad. Now, I came to you guys. I appreciate everything you have tried to do or do, but I'm getting nowhere with this. Mr. Brzezowski has been a gentleman above and beyond. He has spoken with Mrs. Hill. I have spoken to her. She's pretty much being lied to from her, from her company or whoever. She's in Philadelphia. Whoever her liaison here is, is telling her things that aren't true. They said they cut the grass. Mr. Smalls could have contested it. The grass has not been cut. 
am I am I wrong, Brian? No. Okay. Also, the fencing, like I had submitted proof to everyone here, is collapsing. With the heavy rain we have, I can show you more pictures now that their wood tie rails have completely come dislodged. I sent the pictures to Mr. Spiller. He has them. At this point, it's going to become a danger to my family. I have two young children playing in the backyard. If the fence collapse, there's a four-foot drop between my house and the railroad tracks. If it collapses, I also have a pool there, as I've stated before. We're getting nowhere. There's got to be something someone can do to help us further this. Mr. Brzezowski is only a health officer. He has done the best he can. He can't even get them to cut the grass. I can forward you all the emails and everything that they have sent to me stating that the grass was cut. I got pictures to show it wasn't. Telling me they came out and surveyed the land and that the fence is on my property. I sent them a deed, copied, showed them that the property line is actually dead center, where my fence is, is actually dead center of their property. I was told that they were going to investigate. Again, I'm not looking to start no trouble. I'm not looking to try to be a gentleman through this. But now it's getting to the point where if that fence collapses, the pool collapses, my family can be in jeopardy. Everyone here must have a family and would look to care for them. So I'm looking and asking for the help of the township or anybody who can to help me further along. I am willing to pay to fix the fence and the wall. I've made that clear to the council, to Conrail, to Mr. Brzezowski. I'll pay for it. All I want is rights to get on their property, which they tell me if I step on their property, I will be arrested. Um, council Vice President, um, thank you, Mr. Alfieri. Uh Everything he says is accurate. Um, this has been going on for four months. Uh, I've been at his house. I have the pictures. Of Brian, Councilman Small has been at his house. Uh, we got the health administration, the health department involved, and um, Inspector Mr. Brzezowski Brzezowski has been in my house has, also. Was, it's been a home run with this new contact that we have. She is apparently one of the presidents or directors of Conrail. So what's happening is we have an issue. We give Inspector Brzezowski the issue. He's going to the director. Director's calling Conrail Local to get it done. Somebody at Conrail Local is telling the director it's getting done, and it's not getting done. So at the end of the day, I mean, as a phrase, this gentleman's fence, I must have at least eight residents that have reached out to me because uh, of the overgrown vegetation. Is there anything at this point? I know, I believe Inspector Brzezowski is uh, coming out to your property tomorrow? Yes, he said he was going to come out. I sent you the pictures to show he wants to see it firsthand because Mrs. Hill hasn't returned either one of our phone calls in the last two weeks. My last communication with her was the fence is on my property line. I can do whatever I want with it. When I showed her the pictures and gave her a copy of my deed and survey, everything ceased to stop. No more phone calls, no more emails, or nothing. Again, I'm not asking anybody to pay for it. I'll pay for it myself if I have to, because as anybody here who has a family, my family comes first. My two young children play in that yard. They play in the pool. The, pool, the fence collapses, the pool collapses. You can see from the pictures, if Mr. Mr. Spiller can send them to everyone here, the grading of the house is now going underneath the fence. The wood is coming out. It is a danger. I mean, if they're worried about the railroads, they should be worried that if that water gets into my house or gets onto that track, you're talking over 50,000 gallons of water. And whatever damage it'll cause to them, cause my home, and God forbid something happens to my kids. I mean, they're two young kids. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. They play in their backyard. I, again, I bought my house knowing the railroad was there, but this is getting above and beyond. Okay. And um, I need help. It, it, have, we, have we reached out to like, uh, who, I don't know if it's Congress Pallone, is, is he the congressman for that area? Maybe we could get yeah, one um, of the Congress people involved with this? Um, Council Vice President, some, juice. something I think we're going to try to do, and to, to put it in perspective, and, and we are sympathetic, but to put it in perspective, uh, Conrail is one of the most difficult, or if not the most difficult agency um, I know I've ever dealt with, and I think in his administration we, we, we deal with. Um, and they're relatively immune to any type of local pressure because um, they are regulated um, by the, by the um, by, in effect, by the federal government. Um, so they are very, very, very um, recalcitrant and difficult um, to move in any meaningful way. Um, have, and I gotta tell you, I think we've had some success there. Um, Having said that, we've identified a former employee of Conrail who's gone into uh, 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 to private consulting. Um, we're actually going to interview him on Monday. Uh, he's a former executive there. 
um, to see if he can't provide uh, some guidance, maybe use some of his old contacts. Um, so we are going to have that discussion. If Mayor, Bay, Mayor uh, bears some fruit, um, we are sympathetic. We're going to we're going we're gonna to try to. It's a little different approach than we've tried in the past. Um, I'm not sure it's going to work, but um, we're going to uh, ask you guys actually to spend a little money and let us retain someone um, and and see if we can um, come in the side door there and get something done. Um, again, Conrail is a difficult group to deal with, and yes, we have had conversations um, right up through, uh, not recently, but historically, right up through uh, our uh, U.S. Senators. Um, and, and they weren't successful in moving that model with its Conrail. So it's not, a, it's not an easy situation. Can I make one suggestion, sir? I called the EPA and showed them a video of their men dumping diesel fuel off their trains in the backyard. The EPA came out and investigated it and, fire, and fined them. And they came out and they cleaned it up. I understand that Conrail is hard. I worked for New Jersey Transit for 25 years. I can tell you the ins and outs probably as good as the executive because I was in the field. I know what they think and how they think. And like I said when I first came here, I know that they're not going to move very easy to help or they're going to do anything. I'm not asking anybody to do anything other than get me permission to build a fence to protect my family. I'm not asking anybody to do anything. They don't want to cut the grass. When I'm building the fence, I'll cut the grass. It's a simple, simple yes or no. If I get a no, I'll go a different avenue. If that means I have to obtain lawyers, I will. If I have to file a petition against Conrail, I will. I'm not looking to do that. I became here as a gentleman and have consistently been a gentleman to everybody who has spoken to me. But now, if you look at these pictures, you can see the gravity of what I'm saying. And it's not a joke. I've waited four months for them to do something. We've had heavy rain and continue to have heavy rain. It's, it's, that fence will continue it, to Your time, your time is up. But um, is there any way, whoever you've been dealing with, if you could see if you could get an answer on that, as far as him with the with the wall, and, you know, because he said simple yes or no answer. I mean, can we just sure, we can go back and ask for yes or no answer? I got to tell you, at some point in time, if they haven't moved in four months, I think I would accept that as a no. But no, because if you listen to the emails you'll, and look at what she's written to me, and I will forward them to Mr. Spiller tonight. They say that she is working on it. She says that they came out and did the work, which they did not do. She admittedly and openly said to me she will come out here okay. the first week of September okay. and see this herself. Then will you email Mr. Spiller that information? And like I said, and obviously you said it yourself, you know the town is working on it. You know, it's not, you know, no, going wayside. I, don't underst I, I understand that it's not a problem that the township can handle. But something okay. that we were trying to help out with. Right, I agree with, and I, I, again, I appreciate everything you've done. Right. But if I have to go to the Senator myself, or if I have to go to a Congressman, I have no problem doing so. Save yourselves the money of hiring someone. I'll do the legwork for you free of charge. Right. And I got just as many contacts as probably he does, if not more, because I work with the people who do the work, not just sit behind a desk right. and give orders. Okay, well, do me a favor and forward it to uh, Councilman Spiller. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other? Wait. When you came to the meeting the first time four months ago, everything he said was on We spoke today. There has been some progress. Um, and I think he'll, he'll admit some, there's some progress. As far as the trains coupling uh, in the middle of the night, as far as them running down the tracks, ringing her bells in the middle of the night, uh, he's contacting uh, Mr. Jowski, Mr. Spiller, has worked diligently on this progress. So there ha has been some progress, but the vegetation is over six foot high. It's over my back fence, so it, it's six foot high and it's about ten feet deep. So the, uh, the possums and the groundhogs and it's every other bird you want to talk about is running wild behind my house. So whatever we could do, it's greatly appreciated. As far as Mr. Small was saying, I contact the tower when they put their train there because Mrs. Jocelyn Hill, who is the legal advisor and I guess their lawyer for community relations gave me the number, said if the train is there on Saturday morning, call. I call Saturday mornings when the train is there overnight. By two o'clock that day, they're gone. And the answer I got from them was, we don't have the money to pay overtime. So when the night crew doesn't finish it, it stays there as a layover. Now, if anybody doesn't understand what a layover is, layover in a yard means that it's parked there until they can move it. The train yard in the back of our houses is not a layover yard, it's a pass-through. You're talking about diesel fuel, which the EPA already came out and fined them for. That's a carcinogen. 
I don't know if anybody else would be afraid for their kids and their family who play out there. But it's getting to a point where you're putting people's lives in danger. Okay, well, like I said, we'll, we'll do everything we can, you know, whatever we can do. Yeah, get the kill. Okay, well, thank you. Next. Thank you again. I'm going. Thank you. John with Tariq Woodbridge. A couple of years ago, we had the same situation with Tiva in C1 for quite a, few, quite a long time. And I think it's probably some misunderstanding in this situation. I think if you want to do it as individual, instead of company, do the fence or anything else. They might stop you because if you get hurt or anything else is not done properly. But if you hire somebody to do it that does the business, it's insured, there's no way they can stop you by putting fence on your own property. Again, uh, a German, uh, we, know, we know each other as a matter of fact, uh, it's been going for years. You know, Conrail, it's, the rail, railroad is owned by federal government. The trains are not. Trains are only private companies. Could be a dozen different companies with those trains. It's not the tracks that make the problem, it's the trains that make the problems. You know, the noise, the coupling, all this other and stuff. And the township here. is all aware of this, Mr. Vitara. Yeah. They've been out there, Councilman Spiller, Councilman Small, the administration, Obviously, you heard. Okay, so I, I understand, it's, it's, but it's we had being, it's being worked on, and you know as well. Trying to do anything with Conrail, it I know, is like I understand, you know, I understand. But again, this okay, is not so this every, everything in the power the township is doing is they're doing. I understand. It's okay. not township's fault, believe me. It's a, you do with federal government. But again, you talk about the danger to the to the we, family, to the that. kids, things like that. They're so, aware of that. Uh, if everybody gets together, not just the individuals. Everybody get together. A couple of years ago, we put a lot of pressure on them, and we know why those trains are there because they can put them in a the yard. They take advantage of the individuals, which they shouldn't. Thank you. Motion. Any other comments from the public? Any other motion that the public will be closed. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed to the agenda. Okay, I'll go to my agenda. Uh, go to item number 11, the Ford's business community. They are having, getting back together after summer uh, recess, and they're having their meeting this Monday, um, 9.30 at the Ford's firehouse. And uh, the meeting will start at 9.30 and roughly last maybe about 90 minutes. So if anyone is interested in, in joining the, the group, they could attend the meeting and also uh, they'll be collecting the dues to uh, belong to the Ford's community business. Uh, otherwise, uh, two things. Um, number one is, uh, and I know I've been working with um, mayor's office and Jerry Mazork on the um, lights over on the King George Road Bridge. Uh, it's been a long time, another one to deal with. One says it's the state and the other one is blaming the county, but it's coming down to where PSCG is working with the, with the state on this. But the whole summer has come and gone and, and nothing's been done over there. So, um, Mr. Landolfi, if you, if you could just uh, talk to Jerry, Ms. Mazork, about uh, the lights on the King George Road Bridge. Um, they're still out, they've been out all summer. They've been out since last year, actually. Uh, so if we could uh, try to see what's going on over there. Once again, uh, we were promised this was gonna be taken care of several weeks ago and it hasn't been taken care of. And um, that's all I have. I'm gonna go to C Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Council President. Um, item number one. WTYRC, I'd like to congratulate all of the Pop Warner football and cheer programs for a successful start to their season. I would like to remind all the league presidents that uh, every third Thursday uh, at 7.30 at the Woodbridge Community Center, the uh, president meetings at the WTYRC where all of the information from the township can be uh, transferred to the league presidents <laughs> is held. So please, if you do not have representation, please send someone from your organization to these meetings. I'm sorry, Councilman, what was that date? Uh, that is every third Thursday of the month at 7.30 at the community center in the conference room. Thank you. Thank you. For item number two, our job bank, I'd like to encourage you to check out the township website for Employment Opportunity Center. Most recently, we've added the FedEx Ground. Join the FedEx Ground team at our new facility. 
Uh, think fast, think FedEx ground. Start at the ground and work your way up. All pa package handlers are eligible to receive up to three pay increases in the first six months. Full time and flexible schedule available in specific locations. All interested in individuals must attend a sort observation prior to applying for the package handler position. For more information, register at sort observation at www.watchasort.com. So that's our newest addition to the uh, Woodbridge Township Employment Opportunity Center. I'm going to hold on item number three and number four. Regarding a township pickup, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Henry um, if uh, the leaves, being that we're preparing for the fall, um, if there will be an announcement for the leaf bags that will be coming out soon? Yes. Schedule out. So it'll start next month. And we'll let you know. We just went out to uh, bid. We're awarding a bid for the new leaf bags for this year. So we're gearing up and uh, we'll be making announcements and advertising you know, on our website the, uh, the schedule for leaf pickup. Thank you very much. I also um, received a complaint on, on Austin Avenue in Islin, one across from Jose Tejas. Um, there's a large growth of shrubs and weeds. I don't know if that's our property or if that property is maintained by Route 1. Would you be able to just check? It's just one section in front of uh, a small group of homes over there. Thank you very much. Uh, the Hall of Fame committee is meeting and uh, they are having their banquet coming very soon in uh, October. Um, all of the members have been selected and uh, we look forward to having a very successful uh, dinner. Please check our um, our website for information regarding the upcoming dinner. <clears throat> our drive-in movies or our, um, our movies in the park will begin this Friday, September 9th. It's Parker Press Park. It opens at 6 p.m. The movies start at dusk and we'll start with Back to the Future, Grease, and Miracle. Those will be the three movies for the next three Fridays. And finally, I'd like to uh, go down to the Independent Club of Colonia. They're preparing for a, a fantastic event called the Gospel Crab Fest. Uh, they will have a recording artists there uh, for praise, fellowship, food, fun, dance, sing, or shout. Your choice. S Saturday, September 24th. That's at 1 to 5 p.m. at Colonia Middle School, 100 Delaware Avenue. For information, you can call 908-337-1554. The cost for adults is $25 and children is $12.50. That is all I have, Council President. Okay. And before I go Thanks, to President. Councilman Vicari, just the one thing I forgot to mention. Um, I know we've reached out to the county in regards to the two traffic lights over by, our, one by Our Lady of Peace and one by Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the timing has been way off since they repaved the road over there. And I know that we had notified the county about this probably several weeks ago and uh, still hasn't been corrected yet. So can we reach out to them once again to see where, where and what's going on with, with the changing of the, uh, the timing on the two traffic lights? Councilman Vicara. Thank you, Council President. A few items. First, uh, number one, with the Woodbridge Community Center. I mentioned uh, a few times, but the Woodbridge Community Center and Highland Grove Child Care Centers are accepting applications for preschool for those parents that need uh, that type of service and also there is school age program pre-kindergarten uh, I'm sorry before kindergarten uh, and after so those are extended programs parents that have uh, children in kindergarten or would like to put them in preschool and are working these are some opportunities to have them in an educationally based uh, safe program all of the uh, activities that go on at our community center and the, the various other uh, locations can be found on uh, njwcc.com, New Jersey Woodbridge Community Center.com, chock full of information. Our Senior Olympics coming up this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's 9, 10, and 11. Director Simaluka, I don't want to put you on, on the spot, but can you, reg can you walk up and register or it's closed now? I, I'm sorry, I don't know that. There's some still open, but uh, for the most part, it's closed. Okay, so I guess if you want to take a shot, you can go on to our website and the information is up there. Uh, speaking of our website, I'd like to go down to my agenda item number five, the ninth annual tour to Woodbridge, which is a bike tour, not a bike race, a 30 mile and 15 mile tour. Within Woodbridge Township is Sunday, September 25th. 
This information is also up on the township website and it's interactive so you can actually go on there, go on the race rosters, you can pay, you can register, it's going to be a great event. Again, there's a 15 mile and 30 mile. Uh, you have to mind the, the, the street laws and rules of the street, but the police are in the front and in the back, so it's a fun and safe event. And finally, just the thanks goes out to um, Jeff Serpolo and all our friends at the club at Woodbridge for running an excellent uh, crossroads race this past Sunday, the day before Labor Day. We had um, uh, a large number of people that ran either a 10K or a 5K, and there were races for little children. It just encourages healthy opportunities. And I'm happy to say that, and I should have the results at the next meeting, but a lot of the overall winners, I know the overall male and the overall female were Woodbridge Township residents, which don't always happen. This race has been going on for a long time and it, it actually attracts people, not only all over the state of New Jersey, but from outside of the state. So again, congrats to all those that were involved and, and that's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Councilwoman Council Meehan. Thank you, Council President. I just have a, a few events that are coming up that I'd like to share. This Friday, nine, um, on September 9th, we'll be holding an interfaith memorial, memorial service honoring the Woodbridge Township residents that we lost on 9-11. We'll also take this time to honor our, our first responders in Woodbridge Township. It'll be at 6 p.m. this Friday, again, in front of Town Hall. And then on September 24th, we, we are holding our Colonia Cleanup at Charlie Shaughnessy Park. If you or your organization would like to come out and help us beautify Colonia, you can meet us at the park at 9, bring a shovel and some gloves. Um, and then after that, that same afternoon, we will be holding a annual charity beer fest at Parker Press. The event will be from 1 to 5 p.m. Admission is $30, and all proceeds from this event will go to Ga Gabby Flores. She's a six-year-old little girl from Woodbridge who is very bravely battling cancer, so that's going to be for her. So if anybody could come out and support us, it would be greatly appreciated by her family. And that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Council President. Um, item number six, our police community relations. I would like to thank our Woodbridge Police Department, especially Detective Zeno and Detective Slosberg for their participation in the Cosby, KSB block party. Um, they were there, we were trying to reach out to the KSB community and they were there talking to the parents and talking to the children's. We also handed out backpacks to the kids for the, um, today they started school. And also thank the KSB fire department because they were there with their fire truck and the kids were able to go in the fire truck and talk to the firemen. So again, thank you to our Woodbridge Police Department and thank you to the KSB Fire Department. Item number nine, the Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month here in Woodbridge with the Hispanic Heritage Festival on September 25th, which is a Sunday, from 12 to 6 at Parker Press. So come out um, and join. It's a free event. There will be music, there will be food, and it will be a community event where we can interact and learn more about each other. Um, estamos celebrando el mes de la herencia hispana aquí en el pueblo de Woodbridge. Por favor, vengan el domingo, septiembre 25, de 12 a las 6, en el parque de Parker Press, aquí en Woodbridge. Es un evento que es gratis y habrá música, comida y mucha información sobre los departamentos del pueblo. Item number 10, the Varen Art Center is now showing Feria de Sevilla in plain air. There will be a reception next Tuesday, September 13th from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Varen Arts Center, and this show will run from now through September 23rd. They will also be hosting their Varen Fest 2016, which will be held on Saturday, October 1st from 10 to 3 p.m. Tables are still available. Please contact the Varen Arts Center through the township website, which is www twp.woodbridge.nj.us. Thank you, that's all. <clears throat> Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council Vice President. <clears throat> Excuse me, item number nine, Port Reading Firehouse Improvements. Uh, I would like to touch on some of the improvements and upgrades that are currently happening at the Port Reading Firehouse. Thanks in part to a shared service project between the township and the Port Reading Board of Fire Commissioners. Scope of the work that is either complete or close to completion consists of the com complete removal of the existing roof and installation of new roof panels, uh, along with a new EPDM rubber roof, improved venting in the soffits and installation of new vented vinyl soffit, the installation of new concrete walks, steps and railings, regraded the grounds adjacent to the entrance uh, in an effort to eliminate the ponding water that was seeping into the basement mechanical room, removal of the original front and rear entrance doorways with the installation of new storefront weather tight doors, hardware and sidelights, 
installed the required electrical modifications for the uh, new lighting and switching that was uh, put in. Installation of new sheetrock panels, a ceiling grid, ceiling tiles, and LED light fixtures. <clears throat> Painting uh, the entire interior, uh, upgrading and installation of new telecommunication um, alarm wiring, uh, expanded the career quarters, and prepared for the future connection to the township-owned fiber optic network. Had a tour there. Uh, they're coming along really well. Uh, Poor Running Fire headquarters was kind of stuck in the 70s uh, infrastructure-wise, so we now brought them into uh, present day. Item number 13, I just wanted to give another update on the Avenel Street paving project. Unfortunately, we're still at a standstill because of the governor's uh, ruling, but I reached out to the administration. I'd like to thank the administration, Director Hubner, and Traffic Maintenance. They went out there <clears throat> and put the yellow striping down along with two crosswalks across Avenel Street at Minna Avenue and Remsen Avenue. Uh, that will extremely be beneficial to the Avenel Middle School kids that come from that side because they're as of now they have to go all the way down to St. George Avenue for a crosswalk <clears throat> and along I will also help the patrons that utilize the Avenue Street business community uh, this was supposed to be done with the paving po project but with the delay now the township swiftly acted uh, to make sure the crosswalks were put down so thank you very much uh, my the rest of my agenda is in order Council Ms. Paul Thank you, Council Vice President. On item number five, uh, the township's going to launch a new website starting on uh, September 15th. It's the final stages of the design, so look for that. And also, just a follow up on item number eight, senior transportation should be picking up shortly. So, uh, again, check our website uh, for that. Everything else will work. Thank you. Councilman Patel. Well, I have a comment on item number six. Uh, <clears throat> we had been dealing with the police department. I have investigated this area. It's by the Metro Park Railway Station. Uh, we do have existing permit zone, residential permit. I think we are just going to change the hours there. Uh, <coughs> other, other items, uh, they are in order. Thanks. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to be brief on the number of liquor license transfers still under review. I'm trying to wrap up City Tavern to move forward on that. Outer Bridge Liquors as well, and the two newest ones is the Tilted Guild and David Busters uh, that the police just started investigating. Uh, the rest of my agenda is in order. Thank you. Mr. Landolph. Uh, thank you, Council President. A brief agenda tonight. Uh, under resolutions, we may have a mineral appointment next uh, meeting. We also have um, uh, two items under purchasing. One is uh, leaf bags, and um, we're out to bid on improvements to the pistol range. Two items not on my agenda. One is uh, we're going to ask you to approve a resolution uh, hiring a consultant uh, to prepare plan specifications for upgrade to the boilers at the library in Evergreen. Um, and last, I'd like to just spend a moment with it. Um, we're about to start uh, doing some of the improvements that was recommended jointly uh, by Hire and Gold Associates when they did the, uh, the plan for the Conservancy and then ultimately by Rutgers, uh, who actually came um, and did a planting plan for us in terms of what type of, of uh, vegetation we should have in the Conservancy. Um, we'll be down there within, um, certainly before the next meeting, within the next two weeks, uh, to start removing some of, of the roadways and uh, commence doing the, the tree planting and uh, some of the lower growth also. So uh, by the next time we meet, uh, that, that process should be well underway in, in what's gonna be phase one of creating the Conservancy. Um, that's all I have, uh, Council President. Thank you, Council President. I have a proposal to add residential permit parking to uh, North of Laurel Avenue, Maple Road, Oak Avenue, South Walnut Avenue, and Willow Avenue, all in Island during designated times and days. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Green? I don't have anything today. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Smoluka? Thank you, Council President. I have two items tonight. The annual donation to the C. Warren Library and the annual donation to the W2YRC. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council President. In addition to our standard uh, bi-weekly refund resolution, we'll also have resolution for further contract in our ongoing coal litigation. Um, we're, we're just about to bring it to a close, but as I know you know, we've had multiple documents revised many times to tie up any of the loose ends with the court proceeding and um, there's a lot of calculation and work to put all of those documents together, so we need a further contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Council President. We just have our bond releases. I just re want to remind the uh, residents that Middlesex County will be hosting a 
uh, hazardous waste drop off next Saturday, September 17th at our public works facility from 9 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock. Anyone that's uh, interested, they can go on the county website to see what items are accepted, which ones aren't. Did it go to the park? That's in the evening, Council.